I'll choose the former Have you seen the West? It's beautiful Are you coming with? Scotty Wallace here on KW Judas. We are privileged yes. to have. Um, I know that's not really your real name. Well, no, what inspired not. you to go with that alias? Um, one time Out of I, curiosity. Was, I was at work and uh, I was trying to think of cool band names and the name Scotty just kept like coming into my head and I just really liked <laughs> uh, I listened to a lot of bands that seemed to have just like first names for band names, um, like Omar or Oscar or whatever. So I was like, Scotty would be a cool name. And of course it was taken. 
Oh. Um, but also, I wanted to like have the name ha- like mean something more than just like oh, it just sounded cool. So so Wallace comes from uh, from Wallace Stevens, who was a lawyer, um, and uh, he actually became known as his for his poetry. So he became famous kind of as a poet, but he was a lawyer by trade. That's cool. When was about when do you know about? Like what period of time? Yeah, about what period of time that <sighs> was. Um, I want to say like somewhere thirties or forties, cool. maybe fifties. Um, someone's probably gonna know, and I'm probably way off, and I'm really sorry. <laughs> I read it about <laughs> it one time. That's what inspired me. I didn't just like look for names. I, I I knew of this person and read about him to try and know, but unfortunately, my my memory of of historical facts is pretty weak. It's all good, man. That's not what we're here for, historical facts. But, you know, if you have any. <laughs> other, than, uh, other than that one. Um, <laughs> and and uh, I guess just uh, the one I just shared about how I named my band, I guess, is part of. Cool. So you are part of a full band as well. Yep. Yeah. So I'm in a band called Uncle Dirt. Uh, right. And uh, up until recently, we've been playing shows pretty regularly uh, around Salt Lake and in Provo. Um, and we're going on a break for a couple of years. We got two members going on missions. It's a pretty typical situation of. Yeah, it uh, happens. <laughs> it happens. But it's only two years, right? It's only two years, and I'm I'm excited for them. It's gonna be a really fun um, time for me to um, just kind of focus on uh, my own music. I feel like the last couple of years I've been learning a lot of things like recording my own music and things like that. And I have all these songs that I never felt like I was able to get out because they're always for like a band. Um, I always, I always like prefer to write for a band. I always that's, prefer to have yeah, a lot that's of always songs. Cool. So it's gonna be a fun time for me also to just like take a break from playing shows and uh, record some music. I'm working on an album right now. Um, so, so Uncle Dirt actually. So we're actually going on tour though in August. Um, I'm bringing some like Sweet. just uh, temporary musicians on the road with me. So, but it's gonna be under a new name. So, the the new name of the band. Yeah. You say it's no longer going to be Uncle Dirt? Or? So it'll be the same songs. Basically what happened was like, okay, we'll take a break with Uncle Dirt, and I'll make new music uh, under the moniker Scotty Wallace, and it'll be like a solo project. But I just like, every time we played a show, I was just like, man, this I, I like these songs still. I feel like they still have a lot of life in them. Um, I love playing this kind of music. I love playing with the bands we play as Uncle Dirt. So, But I didn't feel like it was right to keep the same name or have it be the same band with uh with two very important members uh, so like a lead guitar player and a drummer right. leading the band i just didn't feel right i just didn't feel like it was going to be the same band without him so yeah, i i get what you mean i figured i could play the same songs they're still my songs but uh give it a new name kind of a new brand and it's kind right. of a way to start fresh so cool well what's the name of this next ditty you got for us next ditty Next song. This song is, is actually an Uncle Dirt song. Um, okay. Called Nothing Wrong. Uh, it's on a split we did with Pop Warner, who I think was here a few months Pop ago. Pop Warner. So, yes, we're yeah. familiar with those guys. So, um, yes. <laughs> Let us cheers to Pop Warner, Scotty Wallace, KW Judas, and Free Radio Prava. Pop, pop, pop. And LeVar Burton, of course. Yes. Yeah, 
was right on every count. I've got nothing to offer here. But if I could just convince myself, I could convince you that I'm still there. So this is how it feels. The exhaustion of never keeping up for long. Somehow I always knew that alone in my mind was I wanted to be, so will you tell me your story? Was there anything to say from the top? For anyone, for anything to share the memory? I think I think too much about the thoughts you think. I think I think too much about the thoughts you think. I think I think too much about the thoughts you think. I think I think too much. I think I think. That was cool. We have Scotty Wallace. I don't know why. Every time I say that, I want to say it with an accent. That's understandable. I feel Scotty like Wallace. That's how I feel too. Scotty Wallace here on KW Duties. Uh, sorry if my accent's not quite. Uh, I have this fantasy of like touring in Europe, and uh, you are you. So whenever I envision that fantasy in my head, I'm in France somewhere. And uh, I pronounce it Scotty Wallace because I'm fluent in French. Really, but uh, that's, you know, in my fantasy, I'm fluent in French. You should learn French and uh, write a couple songs. Uh, that's actually that really funny. So, um, It'd be pretty cool. I actually do know probably a conversational level, uh, amount of French. Um, I'm interested in languages. So maybe in a few songs yeah. that might be something I do. Uh, as am I, and uh, so I stick think around. that um, you know, if that's already something you're into, you know, you should make sure that you change your voice and everything, you know, St- f- to get the accents right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Right on. Right. <laughs> Just to, yeah. I'll keep playing the guitar in one key, and I'll sing in a new key every verse for every language. Oh. That way, no matter how well I. No, no matter how good my diction is, it'll still sound terrible. But I don't know. I, th- I think I think you could pull it off. I think you pull it off. So, what's the name of this next song? Uh, this next song is called Ohio. It's another Uncle Dirt song, also on that split aforementioned. What's the name of the split? Split is called Split. <laughs> oh, it's called damn. Uncle. It's well, called uh, Pop Warner that's slash fun. Uncle Dirt Split, I think. And you can find it on Bandcamp at either UncleDirt.bandcamp.com or Pop Warner Music. Cool. So, how many songs did you guys put on that split? Uh, on the split, just four songs. And two they songs put five. four songs as well. Oh, sorry. No, like Uncle Dirt did two songs, and and Pop Warner did oh, two songs. Okay. So four Word. songs total. Yeah, yeah. Word. We recorded Again, at yeah. Studio Studio Dada up in Provo with Stephen Cope. He did a wonderful job. Sweet. I don't think he usually records bands like us. So, um, Wh- who is he, if you wouldn't mind explaining? Stephen Cope. Stephen Cope. Yeah. Um, just for those out there listening. I don't know listening. super well. He, um, he runs something called the Medusa Collective, um, which is like a kind of a punk collective for like LGBTQ um, people. Right. Well, really for anyone, everyone, but he does, um, he does special events for like um, all like exclusive, like for example, all female bands or like um, non-binary um, musicians and things like that. So he does uh, right. that kind of thing with Medusa Collective. I mean, that's as far as I have, have so far experienced. He probably and does more. And that's uh, down here in... Provo. In Provo, correct. Cool. Yeah. So, uh, and then he also runs Studio Studio Dada. He's uh, got a music project called Officer Jenny. Um, it's pretty pretty interesting music. It's definitely different from what I've ever Dada been used to. Dada is in like Dadaism, or is it I, have, like, I have no idea to be honest with you. Um, that's just kind of curious. That raises an eyebrow because that's very interesting stuff. So, yeah, you should ask him. Uh, Who is this again? Stephen Cope. 
Stephen Cope. Yeah, he does sound at music cool. also. Here cool, Cobo, cool. So. Yeah. Yeah, I hear they just got a new location. Uh, yeah, for a few months. Um, it's a pretty neat space. It's different from obviously from the last one they did. It's a little bit more. Uh, I think it's a little bit larger of a space, a bit larger of a stage, um, uh, which I like. I feel like this sounds a little bit better too, and I don't have too much experience with the old venue though. I had been there maybe yeah, twice, it was so. it was cool. I mean, there was things about it that weren't cool, but it was you know I liked it. Anyways, the name of this next song, without further ado, is Ohio. Ohio. We have Scotty Wallace on KW Judas Free Radio Provo. Right on. <laughs> Kennedy Judas Free Radio Provo. We have our live local guest, Scotty Wallace. Um, have you always lived in Utah? No, I'm actually from Wisconsin originally. Moved out Wisconsin. To Utah. Wisconsin. <laughs> That's exactly how every single person reacts whenever I tell them. <laughs> every single person. I'm sorry. I didn't 100% mean of that. the time. No, it's okay. Uh, <laughs> Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Yeah. So how how long have you been in Utah? Uh, let's see. So this is my second round, I guess. I, I moved out to Salt Lake maybe a year and a half ago for a few months, moved back. So I've been here this time for about a year now. Hmm. Moved out, I think, July of 2015. So. And what brings you to Utah, really? I college. Mean, <laughs> that's it? Yep. There's no college in Wisconsin? Uh, there's college in Wisconsin, but... Uh, it's really expensive. I go to BYU here, so it's a little more affordable. And hmm. uh, got a lot of friends out here too. It just made more sense to be out here. And um, right. Although That's I do miss Wisconsin. Uh, I mean, I've never been. So um, really green, 
pretty hilly once you get to like the central area where I'm from. I live right on the southern. I live right on the Wisconsin Illinois state line. Um, so most of my life was actually in Illinois. I went to high school in Illinois. Um, the music scene I was a part of is from this town called Rockford, Illinois. So uh, they got a pretty decent music scene up there. Yeah, um, Midwest has a really cool just just punk and DIY scene. Um, That's cool. It's really easy to tour out there. Uh, it seems like every weekend I was seeing a new band from like a new place. <laughs> Hell yeah! East Coast That's way Midwest. cool. So it was awesome. I see Facebook posts. It's really funny. Um, Rockford, Illinois, has I think a reputation officially for being one of like the worst cities in the country, <laughs> one of the most unpleasant places. Wait, what do you mean by the worst um, city? Like at, a lot of crime, as... the infrastructure maybe is a little poor. I don't know. Um, that's just uh, from things I read in, in Rockford, country, Illinois. Rockford, Illinois. But it's this... also one of the coolest cities I've ever been to. I wanted to follow that up. Okay, that um, because. Um, I when just you, you of, lived there. I just kind of ripped on Rockford on the radio, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> which was it's intention. all good. You don't want anyone coming after you or anything, um, right? Well, the, what I was gonna say is that all my friends that are from there. So I, I live about a half hour away, but all my friends that are from there are always posting about how much they love being in Rockford and how much they feel like it's a part of their lives and their culture, and that they really care about improving it. And it seems like it's improving in a lot of ways. That um, is cool. So, and especially with the art and music scene, there's some really cool art spots and very uh, people have been very creative in how they um, involve more people. There's like a cool print shop out there called the Rockford Art Deli that we'd always play shows at, and um, the bands that were coming through on tour could actually print their shirts there instead of having to like really merch, yeah. <laughs> That's so. pretty awesome, actually. That is. Rockford's cool. Rockford's awesome. That's what I was trying that to say. That is pretty cool. I had to say, that that yeah. All right. So for those of you listening out there, you might want to take a visit. What's the name of this next tune? This next song uh, doesn't really have a title. I called it Four Titles because um, it's uh, Four Titles is the title. And four Titles is the title, um, partly because the song is in fact in four languages. <laughs> Oh, cool. So we already talked about that. <laughs> exactly. Hell yeah. yeah. So uh, <laughs> sweet. Um, I'll let you guys guess which ones they are after the song. Ske- oh, wait, no. After the song. Yeah. I was about to start guessing. <laughs> 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 All right. So, yeah. All right.
wizard now here's what it comes down to test your royal wizardry what were all those languages well i definitely heard french uh i don't know on some of those that come on judas <laughs> do, do you guys like black metal maybe death metal are you kidding uh, really really I have a pretty rhetorical question, but you know I don't want to. Ah, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a fan. Uh, okay. I enjoy some, depending on the band. But that wasn't a uh, that wasn't a uh, diversion from the question. That was a hint. For one of the <laughs> Norwegian, almost. You're very close. Swedish, Swedish, yeah. Yeah, I would. Well, Norwegian's usually black metal. Yeah, Swedish, Swedish, Swedish is, is usually metal. death metal. Yeah, uh, not necessarily. You know. All the way, but right. uh, actually, so we where we met right at the store I work at. Um, yeah, I met a Swedish death, or I think they were a black metal band actually. Cool. They're on a Devastation on the Nation tour. So they weren't even from around here. No, they're from they're straight from Sweden. What was their name? Do you remember? I can't remember. I can't remember the name of the band. I remember the name of the tour was Devastation on the Nation. They always have those crazy names like. Okay, uh, you know, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, like Diadem of Dying Stars, or uh, I don't know, I could just keep going. Mine would be a dead as <laughs> which is just generic dead people. It's <laughs> all about dead people, but it sounds metal because it's in Swedish. Dead people. Dead yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, there's one more. One more. One more language. Oh, guess. shit. Um, <laughs> wizard, help me out on this one. German. Uh, no. No, I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> no, I, I would have recognized that. There's between Germany and the, and the one I spoke. Do you want me to just tell you? <laughs> you might have to, dude. Yeah. So if the, the, first, the first foreign language I was saying was, was Russian. Russian. So it was English, okay, Russian, cool. Swedish, and French in that order. Yeah. Word. Hell yeah. What made you want to do a song like that? I mean, what's um, the, I guess, if you wouldn't mind explaining the lyrical content or the, you know, the theme? Yeah. Um, so, I, back in Wisconsin, um, I went to a community college, uh, just a UW extension, and uh, I was involved in, like, the theater program there and things like that, and my theater director... Cool came up to me. So basically we had this thing called the 24 hour festival. And the whole uh, idea behind the 24 hour festival is you have all kinds of different artists, um, be it visual artists, theater people, singers, songwriters. Um, and, uh, you had to create some piece of art within 24 hours and it had to comply with the theme of the festival. So the theme of the festival was all in good time. It had to be that was a requirement. Is uh -huh. it had to be done within twenty four hours? Yeah, that was yeah, that like, was the requirement. Just to be random. So basically, so you you kind of you sign up with your like medium of choice, you know. So mine was like music. Cool. Um, and other people were like play directors, or they're making a video, or they were just making a painting. So you show up at eight o'clock at night um, at the at the the theater at the college, and they gave you a um, so, so with the requirements, with the knowledge saying that you have to make this piece of art within 24 hours, it had to be with the all in good time theme. And then each, each piece of each, uh, act or whatever got a specific challenge. Yeah. And so 
knowing my interest in languages, they gave me the challenge that I had to write it in at least three foreign languages. <laughs> so and I had 24 hours to That's do that. Cool. So I went That's cool. That's awesome. I went home. I bought a pizza and lots of Mountain Dew. I stayed <laughs> up all night and tried to write this song. And I didn't actually finish it until like right, right before I went on, basically. I was still working that's, on that's the... That's uh, really cool. <laughs> Actually, that was probably one of my favorites, if not my favorite song we've heard so so far. Oh, I, that, I really <laughs> liked that one. And that you just kind of had to just pull it out of your rectum in 24 <laughs> hours. And that was nice. So, again, uh, I don't know if that really explains the lyrical content. Oh, sure. So the lyrical content, basically... Uh, so I did the first verse in English just so I could make... Uh, I mean, so are they all knew? just the same words? Uh, just kind a of. of it? Like uh, that was the original. Or? So um, the, the, the song is just about just, like, being uh, uh, positive and persevering and things like that. Okay. Um, and then each verse... So the second verse... Um, is just well, actually, no. Each verse kind of has to do with that, but it's about uh, specific experiences I had with each language. So with Russian, I'm actually I'm LDS, so I served a mission in Russia. Oh, uh, that was another question I yeah, was going to yeah. ask: is how you know all three of those languages, or how fluent you are in those languages? Yeah. So, so Russian, uh, pretty fluent. Um, cool. By the time I got home from a mission, I was probably as good in Russian as I was in English. At least as as far as what I ever used, you know, there was never a situation where I didn't really know how to, uh, use Russian. So, oh, yeah. um, kind of sparked a real interest in languages. Um, I really love to travel, but, uh, unfortunately, you know, there are limitations like money and time. <laughs> so, yes, of course. um, so I figured learning languages was, would kind of be my way of traveling. Um, it's my way of connecting and being part of other cultures. As is with music, usually. As is with music, yeah, correct. Um, and I just f both, both. I'm like equally passionate about both. Um, cool. And so I started yeah. learning French when I first got home, and then immediately switched to Swedish because one of my best friends is actually from Sweden. And he invited me to his wedding in Finland. He married a Finnish girl, so I started learning Swedish <laughs> and got to the point where I could talk to people at the wedding. Do you know any Finnish? I didn't know any Finnish. I learned a little bit while I was out there, but not a lot. Finnish is a pretty cool language from what I've heard. It's it's pretty cool. I'm it's on my it's on my list for sure to learn before I die. Yeah, I like um, that one. I was actually gonna decided to learn it within the 2016 year. But, uh, See, it's just kind of funny because lately I've personally have been on a kick of looking up all these different uh, international hip hop artists. Yeah, nice. And you would be astounded at how good some of these artists are from Finland, Iceland, Germany, uh, Norway, uh, Korea. You know, I've just looked up, uh, you know, Austria, Russia. Th like, uh -huh. there's some, some yeah. awesome Russian rappers. Um, and, like, of course you can assume that a genre that big is not only going to be big in America, but... Just the fact that it's that huge in so many different other countries. Look up almost any country. Australia, Bosnia. Australian rap's actually really funny because they make fun of how the fact that there are no gangsters in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, yeah, it's that's that's why I kind of really liked that last song that you just played. So let's talk more rock, I guess, <laughs> in the words of... Um, well, I guess I, I don't want to plagiarize, but let's have another song, shall we? Cool. Yeah. Um, this one uh, is actually kind of about my experience in Russia, or more like my thoughts coming home and things like that. So it's called Coming Home. The Coming all Home right. song. Here we got Scotty Wallace, KW Judas, and Free Radio Provo. Thank you all for tuning in. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
never thought I'd stay awake on this plane But that the ink in this bed would last so long But every memory I made is going in this book Someday you can tell your kids you're part of the story Scotty Wallace on KW Judas Free Right AO Provo. Thank you for being with us. We are yeah. at the semi top of the half hour. And we're broadcasting live here from uh the new coming guitar center in Orem. <laughs> have you heard about that? I have. Yeah. Yeah. Well, just, I mean, what just do you that think about that since you kind of work with another uh, another sort of a guitar store. I mean, yeah. uh, should I not ask? I, I'm, no, it's totally. I, I definitely have thoughts about it. Um, I one, just thought, you know, one that my my first thought when I heard about it was that I was just gonna quit my job and work there. <laughs> uh, right, <laughs> but at the same time, I don't know. Uh, you guys do have a, a pretty good setup where you're at. We do, yeah. Um, we're like so far at least. Uh, we're claiming to be, and I think we're right when we claim it as being the Utah's like number one Fender dealer, right. as well as Martins and Taylors. So well, we're pretty proud of that. I'm pretty proud of that. I like being part of that. Um, Just so anyone who doesn't know, uh, this is Best in Music that we're referring to. Best in Music. This yeah. guy works for the Best in Music, and that's kind of why it's like, wow, a guitar center is coming down to Utah County for the first time ever. You know, the first and only guitar center. Um, I've heard a lot of talk about it already. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. So we've we talked a lot about it. Just ways we can, as a business, stay stay ahead of them. And um, our general manager feels very confident that we can. And that's we cool. also have pretty we in general we have pretty varying markets. Nevertheless, we are a guitar shop, but the bread and butter of our business is sheet music. So we have a lot of like people, Word. piano players looking for music or teachers and things like that. So, um, but uh. Yeah, our goal is to not lose any guitar sales to to Guitar Center, at least not any <laughs> Fender Fender sales. So. Well, you know, um, Best in Music has got like several different locations. I mean, isn't there like t two or three there locations four. in Orem? Four in Orem within like a three mile radius <laughs> of each other. <laughs> yeah, and that's yeah. kind of crazy. Um, but yeah, also being underneath Summer Haze. You know, uh, I'm sure it probably helps a lot as well. Yep. With being having all the orchestral and stuff right above. Um, you know, like I don't even know how many times I've actually even found some stuff up there that I was kind of impressed with and couldn't help but I don't know. We're kind of into a lot of weird instruments ourselves. Yeah, you know? I've heard and that. So I remember our first conversation, you're talking about your, your band. Yeah, and I don't want to divert to that, sure. but, you know, we use a lot of weird instruments, and yeah. so we kind of have to go to you guys. <laughs> There's stuff that um, Guitar Center wouldn't have, and I guarantee they wouldn't. But, yeah, so, I don't know. I hope to see both of you guys keep with it, because I want to see more of this shit just flourishing. I, I was pretty yeah. excited to see that they were coming into town, and, you know, like any of those kind of music shops... You know, smoke I mean, shops, yeah. tattoo shops, just an alternative culture altogether. Mm -hmm. But sorry, what were you saying? Oh no, nothing. I was just kind of not really anything. Just affirming what you were saying about kind of being excited for Guitar Center to come. I feel like there's certain things you just can't get unless you go to Taylorsville. Right. Um, so it'd be kind of convenient to have. And that is the nearest Guitar one, Center. isn't it? Yeah, it's the nearest one. So. Yeah. So yeah, even though I, even though yeah, I do like I I like best in music and and work there sometimes i do need to go up to taylorsville to grab an interface i want or whatever so it'll be nice to have one around here yeah and like i say uh the more the better i think yeah 
Yeah, I'd agree with that. Like you said, a stronger alternative culture presence is always welcome. For sure. So, again, without further ado, let's have another tune, shall we? We've got uh, about 20 minutes. Yes, let us switch guitars, huh? And we're probably going to have to have a word from our sponsor pretty soon. We've been waiting for Derpenschley to email us back because it's been a while since we've had an original live show because there's so many cancellations lately. So we're glad to have you. You know, we appreciate that despite your band not being able to make it, you were still able to come down and rock out yeah. just by yourself. Yeah, I'm really happy to be here, to be part of, uh, be part of this. Um, and it's just very lucky that uh, things kind of happened the way they did when they did. Gave me some time to prepare a solo set. Yeah, because we kind of were going to do something a little earlier, but things got a little jumbled. But yeah, yep. without further ado, Scotty Wallace, KW Judas, Free Radio Provo. What's the name of this song, sir? <laughs> uh, this is a tentative title. It's called Mormons Can Be Anarchists Too. Ah. Uh, all right. I like it. Let's hear it. <laughs> Thank you. 
KW Judas, Free Radio Provo. We have our all American hero, <laughs> Scotty Wallace. That time I said it without an accent. Because <laughs> it's I'm all American. All American hero, Scotty Wallace, here on KW Judas, Free Radio Provo. Provo, Provo. Perfect. That was awesome. Yeah. Well, that <laughs> song I almost, I almost liked better than the. That one with the different languages and stuff. Both of those really kicked ass. So, Thank do you, you have an album? I mean, do you have music that we um, can get from you? I mean, is there a way that we can tell our listeners to access your music? Um, on, yeah, um, on Bandcamp, um, there's Uncle Dirt stuff. We just really have that split out right now. Okay. Um, and I'm actually working on two EPs for the summer. So, I'm going on tour this summer out to the Midwest and back. And, and uh, you were going on tour with that band or by yourself? Uh, when we when we were playing together, that was the hope um, that we'd be able to um, put a tour together. But uh, I'm actually going out with a band, so it'll it'll be under my new band name, um, Varsity Machine. Varsity Machine. Yeah. Now, where'd you get that name? Um, <laughs> it's uh, kind of a... You know those soda machines at, like, Wendy's or wherever? <laughs> um, where you can like choose all your, uh, f- you, you can choose the soda and then like the different flavors you throw in it and everything like that. Yeah, and those things like, freak them. me out, man. They're weird. They're a little weird, they're pre- but uh, they're kind of cool. I think they're pretty cool. And my uh, Dylan actually from Pop Warner, he calls them varsity machines. He calls anything he thinks is cool like a varsity thing. <laughs> so it's just varsity, whatever. And so oh, varsity wow, machine. That's but then awesome. it kind of just like I just was thinking about that term, and I'd never thought of it as a band name. Never. But uh, the more I thought of it, I was like, well, people who don't know that story, yeah. it sounds pretty punk rock, I think. <laughs> so that's basically. I didn't feel like Scotty Wallace was like the most like punk sounding name. Not that I really cared, but I kind of thought, well, if I'm gonna tour on this and try to make kind of a a living off music, I want to be able to market it in a way that's, uh, you know, people look at Scotty Wallace and if they're like they're punk kids and think it's like something they're not interested in, then I don't want them to skip it, you know? Word. Varsity Wallace. Varsity Wallace. How about that? (laughs) (laughs) Anyways, so are all the songs that you play solo, that's separate material than... Um, it's kind of your band stuff, like or a, is it kind of? Uh, it's a big old mix. Like I said earlier, like uh, everything I write, I write with the intention of making it for a band. Right. Um, I play a lot of it. So I've been playing solo for a long time, though. And I, since I've been home from my mission, I knew I just had to play shows and just couldn't get a band together. So I. I've arranged a lot of them to be solo songs. Um, I guess I guess uh, short answer is that they all will eventually be um, uh, either Scotty Wall songs or Varsity Machine songs that will be recorded for like a band. So then Scotty Wallace's material is still intended to be different than Varsity Machine material. Um, I, I think I think so. Like they're yeah, two, they're still two separate entities. I, I think guess. I think it'd be yeah. I think it. And is Scotty Wallace intended to be, that's still going to be a band, or is that just your solo stuff? Scotty Wallace will be, well, so, so Scotty Wallace will be a solo project. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with the band, like, Into It Over It. Um, it's kind of where I got my inspiration for it. Basically, he... I've heard of him. Uh, basically, when he first started out, it was just a recording project, and it was just a solo project. Songs right. he wrote and recorded in his apartment, and then he would have, like, session musicians uh, do other instruments like drums or bass or whatever, um, and then when he'd go on tour, he'd just bring people along with him. Yeah, but now it's now that. it's like a band, that's um, cool. and he's got like permanent members. So that's kind of the idea with Scotty Wallace. I want it to be like a more of a recording project, something that I can explore more creatively. Um, so I have some ideas for like different kinds of concept albums and things like that that I want to do. I kind of one thing I kind of realized I'm um, going to school is that I, I really love I really love uh, the classes that are involved in like English majors. So I really like writing and things Word. like that. And I think I want to be like a storyteller. I finally figured that out. Like that's what I want to be <laughs> as a musician. I want to be a storyteller. Yeah, combining the two of those um, is always 
a it's, very interesting combination. So I thought Scotty Wallace could be like the main character in all my in all my concept albums or my books or whatever. That's cool. So like I have these ideas like to write music just about different countries I visit or whatever and like it'll called like Scotty Wallace goes to Europe or whatever, you know. <laughs> so like just things like that. Oh yeah. That's cool. So we have oh how much time do we got? About nine minutes. Enough time for two long ones, three short ones. Kay. And uh yeah. We'll see if we can derive a word from our sponsor. Scotty Walls, QW Judas, free W Bravo. Okay. Scotty Wallace on KW Judas Free Radio Provo. Man, do you want a taco? A taco. Or a burrito or something. I could really use a taco. So we might have to wrap the show up. Only if it's from Del Taco. It has to be from Del Taco. Do you ever go to Mato's? Yes, plenty of times. Mato's is evil, but it's so good. Even the fake Mato's. Okay, so enough time for maybe two short ones. Okay, I can do I can do just like one kind of long, kind of short one between long and short. Okay, I think we got time for it. And then we'll see how much time we got left. I spilled my guts and my mind was ill, and now I'm heaving dry. I've got nothing left to say. Some choices to finally be made I'm getting on this plane Well I had some friends and we made plans But then they left on a cloud and left me in the rain With my parents' expectations I don't know what 
it's like to be known for what I've made But I'm trying to make myself a part of you Smallest part in you Just to be close, so close But never there Tired of Durban Sleek commercials cluttering your TV screen? Yeah. Your video games? You bet. You too? Yeah, 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 yeah. Skrillex? Of course. Salisbury steak and ham fried rice? What about your goldfish bowl, your toilet seat, and your grandmother's dinette set? Well, not so much, but kind of. Well, fear no more. Derpensley's new pseudo Derpensley commercial filter is guaranteed to almost wipe away any potential Derpensley ads, spyware, or pop ups in any random unlikely situation. That's right. Now you can have Derpensley anywhere it's not needed, wanted, or even makes any sense. I hate this. That's right. And if it doesn't say Derpen, it's not Derpensley. So, we got about a minute left. What do you guys want to do for a minute? Hey, I always suggest tiddlywinks at these times. Or do you guys want to uh, try and make a pop-up book? You remember pop-up books? How they used to, like, you know, you'd open them up and... I don't know if we can do that in a minute. A minute and a half. We could read one, because all you have to do is open it, and it just pops up, so you don't even have to really read it. You just kind of, like... Do they still even do that anymore? Yeah, yeah I think so. Pop up books are still I a think, thing. I think there's one called like the Baba Duke. The what? The Baba Duke. Yeah. What'd you just say? You should look it up. The Baba Duke. Uh, all right. Well, look up the Baba Duke. Oh uh, wait, uh, we still got <laughs> uh, twenty seconds. All right, play a twenty second song. A twenty second song. All right. You know how to play black metal. Looking for something sweet. I deserve to run my teeth in pace, don't you think? So if you wanna come, you can come. I will deny your company. If you wanna leave, I will beg you to stay. So it's taking all I have to let you know. Just take more to let you go. Baby, I'm sorry. I will never change. We'd like to thank you all for joining us on another exclusive episode of KW Judith. We now turn you back to your regular free radio programming.